Night falls like a blanket over Sleeper Mountain. Shadows pour down its slopes, catching and pooling beyond the boulders and trees, and gathering in ravines and gullies. As the sun sets beyond the far ridge, you can see how the mountain got its name. Seen in silhouette, the ridge across from us looks like the profile of a sleeping man. You can make out the sharp point of his nose, the round peak of his chin against the bright clouds, picked out against the sky by the setting sun. It's as though some giant chose this place to rest his body and slept and slept until in time he was grown over with trees and grass drowsing here for all eternity the mountain is cloaked in a stately quiet as if the Perfectly well. 
his hearing is excellent. To him, the nighttime is vivid and full of life. Not lonely, quite the opposite, in fact. Are they arguing? Are they courting? Wooing each other with their twit wooing? Or are they simply singing, enjoying the sound of their own hooting? It's a rich, round sound, a chocolatey coo. If you could make a noise like that, wouldn't you? For an owl, it's the day that doesn't make sense. It's too bright, too noisy, too much overall. When the dawn breaks, he retreats from the light to his home in a hollowed out tree, closes his eyes, tucks his beak into his chest, and sleeps among the twigs, feathers, and gathering in ravines and gullies. 
As the sun sets beyond the far ridge, you can see how the mountain got its name. See in silhouette, the ridge across from us looks like the profile of a sleeping man. You can make out the sharp point of his nose, the round peak of his chin against the bright clouds picked out against the sky by the setting sun. It's as though some giant chose this place to rest his body and slept and slept until in time he was grown over with trees and grass, drowsing here for all eternity. cloaked in a stately quiet, as if the world were mindful of the mountain's name and had chosen not to wake it. There are cars on the highway down by the ocean, just the other side of the ridge in fact, and yet no sounds of traffic penetrate this canyon's quiet. quiet, but not silent. If you listen carefully, you can hear the creak of the wind in the trees, and the click and crack of twigs in the stove out here on our deck, the cicadas, and the owls, and other nighttime animals. Who is that hooting out there in the gathering dark? Who? Who? An owl. In fact, if you listen carefully, you'll soon realize that there are two of them calling back and forth between the top branches of the fir trees. Their coo is a single note, and yet it's not a simple sound. It has a kind of hollowness. If you wanted to mimic it, you would have to form your mouth to a perfect O. And yet it has a kind of fullness too. It seems like a sad sound, and yet clearly these two are calling back and forth exuberantly. Maybe it's just that we hear the owls call at night, so we associate it with that lonely feeling of waking up in the night. But really, who knows if owls get lonely? Who knows how the nighttime looks to the owl? With his great big eyes, he can see perfectly well, and his hearing is excellent. To him, Life. 
not lonely. Quite the opposite, in fact. Are they arguing? Are they courting? Wooing each other with their twit wooing? Or are they simply singing? Enjoying the sound of their own hooting? It's a rich, round sound. A chocolatey coo. sets beyond the far ridge, you can see how the mountain 
forgot its name. See in silhouette, the ridge across from us looks like the profile of a sleeping man. You can make out the sharp point of his nose, the round peak of his chin against the bright clouds, picked out against the sky by the setting sun. It's as though some giant chose this place to rest his body and slept and slept until in time he was grown over with trees and grass, drowsing here for all eternity. The mountain is cloaked in a stately quiet. Are they arguing? 
Are they courting? Wooing each other with their twit wooing? Or are they simply singing? Enjoying the sound of their own hooting? It's a rich, round sound. A chocolatey coo. If you could make a noise like that, wouldn't you? For an owl, it's the day that doesn't make sense. It's too bright, too noisy, too much overall. When the dawn breaks, he retreats from the light to his home in a hollowed out tree. Closes his eyes, tucks his beak into his chest, and sleeps among the twigs, feathers, and lint of his nest. The crickets here call all night long. They're small but loud for their size. If you ever catch one inside, they're shiny and all over black. They make their noise by rubbing their legs against the sides of their bodies. It's a special gift they have. The crickets are sensitive to movements around them. If you walk by, they'll see you and stop, but then start again the moment they think you're past. There's something almost comical about it, like someone trying to secretly play the violin. It's like the whole landscape is an orchestra, the sound emanating from the dark boulders and trees. The crickets are the string section, and the owls with their hooting are the woodwind. It's a lovely composition, unpredictable, with a rhythm all of its own. The crickets don't live long, but they make the most of every moment that they're given. They use their singular gift for noise making. I think there's a lesson in that for all of us. Silhouette, the 
ridge across from us looks like the profile of a sleeping man. You can make out the sharp point of his nose, the round peak of his chin against the bright clouds, picked out against the sky by the setting sun. It's as though some giant chose this place to rest his body and slept and slept until in time he was grown over with trees and grass, drowsing here for all eternity. The mountain is cloaked in a stately quiet It's too bright. 
much overall. When the dawn breaks, he retreats from the light to his home in a hollowed out tree, closes his eyes, tucks his beak into his chest, and sleeps among the twigs, feathers, and Crickets here call all night long. They're small, but loud for their size. If you ever catch one inside, they're shiny and all over black. They make their noise by rubbing their legs against the sides of their bodies. It's a special gift they have. The crickets are sensitive to movements around them. If you walk by, they'll see you and stop, but then start again the moment they think you're past. There's something almost comical about it, like someone trying to secretly play the violin. It's like the whole landscape is an orchestra, the sound emanating from the dark boulders and trees. The crickets are the string section with their hooting or the woodwind. It's a lovely composition, unpredictable, with a rhythm all of its own. The crickets don't live long, but they make the most of every moment that they're given. They use their singular gift for noisemaking. I think there's a lesson Orion, the hunter, the constellation.